from the Epistle of St. Jude. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. On this great feast of St. Simon, St. Jude, or known also as Thaddeus, we celebrate them as keeping the Word of God in their hearts. And of course, we have this piece of advice, keep yourselves in the love of God. Let us listen to a word of advice from St. Gertrude. Thinking about our Lord's passion and death, she says this, As no one can handle flour without carrying some of it about with her, so no one can meditate devoutly and assiduously on the passion without deriving great fruit therefrom. And you know, my dear sisters, this is true. Try to take your rolling pin and go to the kitchen and you're rolling that pizza dough, fluffy flour, spark, sparkling around. And after flattening your dough, I bet you that after you put the pizza in the oven and you look at your habit, I bet you any money guaranteed you have some flour about you on your habit that you have to shake off, wipe off. The flower is just going to cling on to you. There's one lesson that a sister must learn from the first months of her religious life. Listen to this, to exchange holy affections with the heart of Jesus. This is at the core of all of your religious life. It's so extremely important for your vocation. And nothing primes us for this holiness and this peace and virtue quite like this, to exchange those affections between your heart and the heart of your master and spouse, Christ our Lord. Now, the reception of Holy Communion is the theater where this best takes place, this holy exchange, where it's most vivid and fruitful, these ex this exchange of ideas and thoughts and affections. Now, to keep true to the phrase of St. Gertrude, the Holy Host is given to us from the sacrificial death of Christ on the cross. It is from the Holy Sacrifice on Calvary. So when St. Gertrude talks about, so it is those who meditate devoutly and assiduously on the Passion, we can also include the Eucharist. And so when we come to the communion rail, the flower from this holy host spiritually must cling to us. This communion rail is a spiritual kitchen. And our hearts are rolling pins. And when we flatten that host, so to speak, all the spiritual, not talking in a literal sense, but we're sharing our desires and our longings for him. So this holy flower dust, so to speak, must cling to our hearts. Every communion. And when it's void of the external emotion or the external feelings, but this dynamic is still going on, it becomes even greater and more fruitful for our souls. And when we go back to our kneelers, 
after having received Holy Communion, what must be said and what must be done? I would invite you, my dear sisters, to listen and reread the notes you received from your novice mistresses back in those days when you were a novice. And hold it to heart, the advice that your superiors gave you. But this morning, I have no place, of course, in your formation in that sense, but I would also like to make it a little attempt to add to that to the virtuous habit that you already have acquired through your novitiate by suggesting uh, some other exercises that you can do to jumpstart and to renew and stimulate what we should be doing in Holy Communion as religious, taking advantage of the grace of God. So I would like in the remainder of this little sermon to share with you a possible colloquy with our Lord and Holy Communion. And maybe you can take some aspect of it here or there and try to apply it combined with the recommendations of your novice mistresses. Oh, my Jesus, how dull is my imagination and memory But behold, I have just received thy unspoiled thoughts and overflowing musings into my own heart and mind. As thy servant, St. Alphonsus, says about thy time on the cross, not a moment was passed thinking on his hurts but rather how to offer up in pain for the salvation of sinners. His only thought was to love us, to love me, O my Savior and King. And lo, I hear freshly as if recent, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. O my Jesus, thy same servant, St. Alphonsus, continues that the Heavenly Father would never have permitted thee to say these words on the cross if they had not the following effect to come, the being forgiven. Enough to think of Longinus, enough to think of St. Peter's 3,000 convincings on the day of Pentecost. Thy heroic forgiveness, while myrids, including me, were still enemies, won over their hearts to thy love and kingdom. O oh, my Jesus, shedding all of thy blood, suffocating for those 10,800 seconds on the cross, every breath thou took Every heartbeat pounding left thee riddled with pain that I caused by my sins and my carelessness. And to thank my, my beloved Jesus for every ten stealings of the sacred host for satanic rituals, thou comest to me this once. What great risks that thou hast given me afforded me. So for every ten refusals of thy thy infinite mercy and forgiveness, I receive thy pardon in one. Oh, my Jesus, thank you for revealing to me how important forgiveness is how I must forgive and how hard it is to forgive. But my Jesus, I just see you suffering and I know that I too could also forgive like thee if I possess thy heart. This Holy Communion, give me thy heart, thy same intense desires 
to forgive. As St. Augustine, thy servant, said, when I find it hard to forgive, I shall have recourse to prayer, and that shall lighten it up and make it easy and possible. I thank thee, my Lord and my Savior, for the broad surrender that cost thee thy life. And these ten minutes are not enough to praise thee. But in these ten minutes of Holy Communion, unadulterated thou I pos doth I possess this surrender. Inside my ribcage, this same giving, this same intending and loving, O oh my Jesus, may it exit out of me, come out of me, manifest itself from me, as I am called to exhibit like love toward adverse moments, ad adverse brothers, and burdensome challenges. By thy holy love, may I act in like manner, especially, my Lord, as thou knowest so well of my mood shifts and my melancholic slippery slopes and in my discouragements. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we continue this holy sacrifice, may the words of St. Jude be tweaked. May we instead say, we have kept ourselves in the love of God and we possess Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.